welcome to this millennia's history channel special on the question. It has been argued by some historians that the Bretton Woods Conference established the contours for an age of neo-imperialism with indirect control based on economic dominance. Assess the validity of this thesis. Now, the Brenton Woods Conference's purposes and goals. It was a gathering of allied nations. They established the International Monetary Fund, IMF, and the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development, IBRD, and it took place in 1944, but it took a long time to implement the policies. It created exchange rates and standards for trade that all countries had to follow and hoped to aid in the reconstruction after the countries had experienced problems. It somewhat helped economic nationalism, such as high tariffs, trade barriers, and economic spheres of influence. It wanted to create a joint Western economic political order. One of the problems the conference faced was the Bank for International Settlements. It was created in a previous intergovernmental agreement and was put on trial for war crimes in helping the Nazis store stolen funds during World War II. The BIS was backed by the US and Norway versus most Europeans, but was ultimately not destroyed. The conference is one of the first examples of international neoliberalism. Neoliberalism is a system of economic liberalism that advocates lots of participation from the private sector, while some regulations are imposed by a strong state actor. Many people don't like neoliberalism because of its perceived favoritism towards corporations while neglecting the poor, causing a large visible opposition to the effects of the conference. Back to the validity of economic-based imperialism. It is unclear if economic dominance is the basis for neo-imperialism. The IMF is able to influence the policy of states that need money from it. For example, the 1994 Mexico peso crisis, the IMF conditioned bailout funds on liberal economic reforms. Success for changing policy of states with international organizations is ultimately limited by factors like willingness of the target state to cooperate, relations with the target state, and the economic status of the target state. You don't have any more leverage with international institutions like the IMF if a nation like North Korea won't talk to you, or if a country like China doesn't feel like following regulations, or if it stays already economically sound. Additionally, international institutions cannot solve problems like terrorism with sanctions. You can't stop non-governmental organizations by threatening a country that cannot already control its populace, like Somalia or Yemen. Many countries already participate in their own trade blocks outside of these institutions, giving them additional economic security. In conclusion, states that you can control with economic institutions are states that can already be influenced by other means. Neo-imperialism is much more the result of overall benefits by following the U.S.'s orders militarily and politically more than economically. In addition to military and political dominance being more important, the ability to condition economic incentives for policy change is not a result of the Brenton Woods Conference, as economic incentives have been tools for control since trade began. The massive amounts of debt prove that a strategy of attempting to control countries on the basis of economic superiority would likely backfire. Therefore, economic dominance of the U.S. is more a tool to show the ability to maintain military primacy than a direct tool in foreign relations. The Gristory Channel sincerely hopes that you liked the trash guitar music from Seth and hopes that you will watch again next millennia for the episode on How Aliens Built the Pyramids.